గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ డాక్టర్ సార్ ఐఎమ్ రాజా వర్కింగ్ యాజ్ ఎగ్జిక్యూటివ్ కమింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ చెన్నై బిఫోర్ పుటింగ్ మై క్వశ్చన్ ఐ విల్ టెల్ ఉన్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ దెన్ ఐ విల్ పుట్ ఏ క్వశ్చన్ సైంటిస్ట్ ఇన్వెంటెడ్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్ట్రుమెంట్స్ ఫర్ హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్స్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ అలెగ్జాండర్ గ్రహంబల్ ఇన్వెంటెడ్ టెలిఫోన్ బట్ అట్ ద టైమ్ ఆఫ్ అలెగ్జాండర్ గ్రహంబల్ అ ఫోన్ ఈజ్ డిఫరెంట్ మోడల్ బట్ ఇన్ అవర్ మోడర్న్ ట్వంటీ ఫస్ట్ సెంచురీ వీ ఆర్ యూజింగ్ మొబైల్ వీ ఆర్ సెండింగ్ ఈమెయిల్స్ ఇంటర్నెట్ క్లిపింగ్స్ పిక్చర్స్ ఆల్ ఓవర్ ద గ్లోబ్ వాట్ ఐ ఆమ్ టెలింగ్ ఈస్ విచ్ ఎవర్ ద మ్యాన్ మేడ్ సమ్ పర్సన్ క్యాన్ చేంజ్ బట్ వన్ థింగ్ ఐ అండర్స్టాండ్ దో ఐ ఎమ్ ఎ స్పిరిచువల్ పర్సన్ ద వీక్లీ సైకిల్ దట్ ఈస్ ద సెవెన్ డేస్ ఆఫ్ ద వీక్ ఇట్స్ యూనిఫార్మ్లీ ఫాలోడ్ ఆల్ ఓవర్ ద గ్లోబ్ whether it is india or afghanistan or usa or germany or europe middle east africa whatever it is around 60 billion people following the weekly cycle that is seven days sunday to saturday uh, i think uh, dr g this seven days weekly cycle is not created by a human being i understood the weekly cycle is created by the almighty creator my question is now i am putting this seven days cycle is written in al kitab and another sub question is is there is any order of creation mentioned in al quran that's all brother asked a question that normally when we invent a human being invents give the example of alexander graham bell who invented telephone but as time keeps on passing it keeps on changing and now we have mobile phone which is different but these are human creations but the weekly cycle that we have throughout the world is a creation of almighty god it's made by almighty god therefore it is followed throughout the world he wants to know that about this creation of the world is it mentioned in the quran is it mentioned in al kitab brother let me tell you one thing that i do agree with you human beings when they do something they invent it keeps on evolving keeps on improving unlike god god is perfect he create something he can make it perfect or he may reveal in stages because to the creation which is created for me not understand for example he sent many messengers the first messenger of adam peace be upon him and kept on sending messengers 124000 messengers then last is prophet muhammad peace be upon him he revealed many messages many books some of the previous books are mentioned in the quran the torah the zabur the injil and the final one is the quran not that almighty god did not know about the quran that time the human beings could not grasp the message so depending upon the level of the human being he kept on sending a revelation when he found they could grasp it he sent the last and final revelation and sent the last and final messenger prophet muhammad peace be upon him now coming to your question of the weekly cycle seven days followed same throughout the world you said from sunday to saturday the seven weekly cycle is there throughout the world but it's not identical if you go to a muslim country sunday is not a holiday friday is a holiday so it is not from sunday to saturday it is friday to thursday but seven days are there but seven day cycle is the same but the days may differ which is the day for holiday etc and similarly if you read the bible the bible too speaks about seven days about the creation even the jewish scripture speaks about that even the quran speaks about that even the hadith speaks about that quran mentions in several places that almighty god he created the world in six days in six epochs what is mentioned in the quran and the other scriptures on the face of it it's the same but if you go into details that the world of a difference the way quran speaks is more scientific 
what the other scriptures speak, it may not be that scientific. For example, the Bible too speaks about the creation of the universe. It says, Almighty God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh day. That means God requires rest. Quran also says, Almighty God created the world in six days, but doesn't say God rested on seven days. Why? Because Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 255 in Ayat al Kursi, Allahu la ilaha al Hayyul Qayyum, la that He is eternal, He is all powerful, He is one. No slumber can seize Him, nor does He require rest. So Almighty God does not require sleep, He does not require rest. So where is the question of Him resting? So, a lot of the portions match, but not everything. If we say God requires rest, means he's like you and me, a human being requires rest. Almighty God does not require rest. So here we differ. What is mentioned in the Bible, it talks about six 24-hour periods. Six days of 24 hours. Which scientists say the universe could not have been made in six days of 24 hours. So scientists disagree with the narration mentioned in the Old Testament, in the Bible. As far as the Quran, the Quran doesn't mention any way that Almighty God created in six 24 days. The Arabic word yom, the plural is ayyam mentioned in the Quran, has got two meanings. One meaning of yom is a normal 24 hour day, like how we have. And the other meaning is a period. It can be of any length, like an epoch. And scientists have got no problem accepting that the universe was created in six epochs, in six long periods, maybe million years or millions of years, there's no problem. So here we differ. As far as the creation, the Quran has got hundreds of verses which talk about creation. I can give a talk on that. Time does not permit me. I'll just mention a few samples. I said, what does Quran speak about creation? It speaks umpteen number of things. But most of the things what Quran has mentioned, we did not know at that time when the Quran was revealed. When the Quran was revealed 1400 years ago, these things were unknown. For example, today when we ask a scientist, he will tell you, when we ask him, how did our universe come into existence? So he will tell you that initially there was a primary nebula. Then there was a secondary separation, a big bang, which gave rise to galaxies, the stars, the planets, the sun, as well as the earth on which we live. This was discovered by a couple of scientists about 35 to 40 years before. And this they called as the Big Bang. Now what was discovered 40 years ago, which the scientists today call as Big Bang, is mentioned in the Quran more than 14 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, which says that, Avalam yaral lazina kafru. Do not the unbelievers see. Anna samawati wal arda. That the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. Here the Quran speaks about the creation of the universe in a nutshell. That the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. Today what the scientists speak about the creation and calling it the Big Bang is already mentioned in the Quran 14 years ago. Previously we thought that the earth on which we live was flat. Just about a few hundred years back, we came to know when Sir Francis Drake in 1577, when he sailed around the earth, he proved that the earth was spherical. Quran mentioned this 1400 years ago in Surah Naziyat, chapter number 79, verse number 30, Wal ard abad azalika dahaha, and thereafter we have made the earth X shape. That is what dahaha, one of its meanings is an expanse, and the earth is an expanse. The other meaning is derived from the Arabic word duya, which means an egg. It does not refer to a normal egg, it specifically refers to the egg of an ostrich. And we know that the world is not completely round like a ball, it is flattened from the pole. And if we analyze the shape of an egg of an ostrich, that too is geospherical in shape. Imagine, the Quran speaks about the geospherical shape of the earth 14 years ago. Previously, we thought the light of the moon was its own light. Recently, we came to know in science, 100 years back, 200 years back, that the light of the moon is not its own light, but it's a reflected light. Quran mentions this 14 years ago in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 61. 
that Almighty God has created the constellations in the sky and placed therein a lamp, the sun having its own light and the moon having reflected light or borrowed light. The Arabic word used for the moonlight is munir or nur, which means borrowed light or reflected light. But for the sun light, it's called as wahaj, siraj, diya, meaning a torch, a blazing lamp, a shining glory, indicating the light of the sun is its own light. In this way, there are many verses in the Quran which talk about the creation, talk about astronomy. When I was in school, I had learned that the sun, though it revolved, it did not rotate about its own axis. It was stationary. Quran mentioned in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 33, Huwal lazi khalaqa layl wa nahara. It's Allah who has created the night and the day. Wa shams wal kamar, the sun and the moon. Kullun fi falaki yasbuhun, each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. The Quran says, the sun and the moon, besides revolving, they also rotate about their own axis. And today, after science has advanced, we have come to know that we can have the image of the sun on the tabletop and we find that the sun has got black spots and it takes about 25 days for these black spots to complete one rotation indicating that sun takes approximately 25 days to complete one rotation. In this way, Quran speaks about the sky as a protected ceiling in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21. Verse number 32. The Quran speaks about the fourth state of matter that is plasma. The Quran says in Surah Dariya, chapter number 51, verse 47, that we have created the vastness, the expanding universe which we came to know recently. So in this way, the Quran speaks about creation in several places. But the point to be noted is that unlike other scriptures, even the other scriptures, the Vedas, the Bible, the other scriptures, they do speak about creation. Now many of the verses what they speak about creation, they match with science. But many of the verses also go against established science. But as far as the Quran is concerned, the Quran contains more than 6,000 verses out of which more than 1,000 speak about science. And not a single verse of the Quran goes against established science. The difference between the Quran and the other scripture is that not a single verse of the Quran goes against established science. It may go against scientific hypotheses which take U-turns. But not a single verse goes against established science. That's the reason the Quran is a unique book. And we say it is the only revelation of Almighty God, the only religious scripture which has been maintained in its pure form and is uncorrupted. That's the reason even if you apply the test of science to all the religious scriptures, all of them fail the test except the Quran. Quran is the only religious scripture on the face of the earth which will pass the test of science. Hope that answers the question, brother.